Some say they're myth, while others disagree. As I saw Cody's hands, I saw a set of just white hands around his. As he started pulling me through, it was just a burst of white light. Why angels are for real on today's 700 Club Interactive. On 700 Club Interactive, we use technology to pray for each other and explore topics that matter to you. Watch what God is doing in the world today. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the program. Thanks for spending your morning with us. And to tell you what's coming up this morning, I'd like to welcome back CBN reporter Scott Ross. Great to have you here. You know what? What? You're getting to be a habit with me. <laughs> <laughs> you start dancing and I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave the dancing to you, you. all right? <laughs> Let me ask you quickly. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had an encounter with an angel that you know of? Um, I have not, personally. Yeah. But I know people who have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have. And we're going to talk about some of that today, actually. And on March 25th, 2009, on Highway 6 near Waco, Texas, two cars crashed into each other head on. Eyewitnesses at the scene saw a fiery crash and also a divine rescue at the hands of angels. 911, what's your emergency? We have a vehicle that is upside down and on fire. We need help now. Four lives intersected on Highway 6 in Crawford, Texas that day. Sherry and Cody Clemens, Lisa Bowden, and Anthony Russo all met in the midst of tragedy. But all say they had a supernatural encounter on that rain-slicked road that changed their lives forever. Lisa's SUV slid into the path of Anthony's oncoming car. The impact flipped Lisa's SUV multiple times, crushing Anthony's car. Both drivers were trapped. My feet were on fire. The car was filling up with smoke. There was fire coming in through my left door, and it had burnt my arm. And my leg, I didn't feel no pain or anything like that. The steering wheel was stuck in my chest. I couldn't move. Anthony blacked out a second time. Lisa began to pray. I just remember saying, God help me. Sherry and Cody Clemens saw the wrecked vehicles and raced to help. Sherry called 911. Then she cried out to God for a miracle. I could just feel this, the gift of faith, stirring inside of my chest that nobody is going to die here today. Nobody, I'm not gonna watch anybody die. God is going to show up. The couple ran over to Lisa's burning SUV. Cody climbed inside to try to pull Lisa from the growing flames. God gave me the courage to go in there because I told him right there I was scared I didn't want to die. I didn't want to burn up. I was upside down and the seat belt, I kept trying to release it, but it wouldn't release. I handed her the knife and she cut the seat belt and she fell to the, to the roof. The roof had been crushed and there was not much room, maybe, maybe less than eight inches or, or for her to get through. In a split second, the impossible situation turned into a divine rescue. When I reached out, we grabbed each other's hands. There was another set of hands that grabbed our hands. As I saw Cody's hands, I saw a set of just white hands around his. As he started pulling me through, it was just a burst of white light. Sherry, who had been standing next to the SUV, witnessed the whole thing. When I saw these hands reach past me, where there was no room, and they grabbed a hold of Cody's hands and Lisa's hands, and all of a sudden it was like, boop. Cody and Lisa were on the grass next to me. But the worst was far from over. A few feet away, Anthony lay unconscious with no way to escape the fire consuming his car. There was this huge explosion, and the flames just completely rolled over the car and over Anthony, just consumed it in the black rolling flames. And I just screamed, I said, God, send your angels now. At that moment, another eyewitness saw a second miracle unfold. I was just crying out, God, you've got to help this man. You've got to help this man. And he seemed to just emerge through the door and he just kind of floated out on, on the ground. So I believe that God sent supernatural angels here to help him get out of that vehicle. Even though Anthony lost consciousness during the accident, he says there's no doubt who rescued him from the fiery crash. Oh, it was definitely God, oh, definitely. I feel like what happened to me was a miracle. I can only say that 
the Lord sent an angel and removed Lisa from the car because she was not going to come out of that car. Um, and he also sent an angel and pulled Anthony out of his car because he was not coming out of that car either. Lisa and Anthony were taken to the hospital with serious injuries, including broken bones and severe burns. I went through eight months of rehab and I'm able to walk. Recovery has been great. My burns have healed with no problems, no skin grafts. Um, that was another miracle that happened. It took me, I think over a year, I was going between a walker and crutches and then from crutches to a cane. I feel good to be walking with a cane, but I still want to walk without one. Two years later, the miracle on Highway 6 remains etched in their minds. A day that desperate prayers were answered, precious lives were saved, and God orchestrated a heroic rescue. God answers the fervent, heartfelt cry, our fervent, heartfelt prayers. God answers those and He delivers us. You know, I, I, people deny so many aspects of the supernatural, and we want to talk about some of that right now. Joining us is author and therapist Judith McNutt. Judith, for purposes of full disclosure, I know you personally. Yes, you do, Scott, <laughs> and I'm glad. Yes. This is great. This book, I, I read it for cover to cover. Here's my annotated copy okay. with everything in it. We just saw that story. Yes. Is that accurate? Oh, it's very accurate. I have stories like that from friends and also that have been sent to me. Angels intervening all the time, everywhere. Did you, have you ever had your own personal encounter with an angel? Oh, many. Really? Many. Yes, throughout my life. That's why I wrote the book. Yeah, well, well okay. first one, first time that it happened to you. Well, I felt like as a child, I was rescued several times by angels, but I never really saw them uh, since their presence. But the, the chapter, the first chapter in the book is about an angel that returns a ring to me that was very precious that my father gave me. And that's the first time I really knew that they were around all the time. And in Jerusalem, I was, my life was actually saved once by an angel. Now, angels don't take anything away from God, Jesus, anything. And we're not supposed to worship angels as such, are we? I'm so glad you said that because some people say, well, why, why write a book on angels? You know, why not write about Jesus? But God created the angels for us. It says that they're created for believers to, you know, be with us and help us. So it doesn't detract from God or Jesus at all. The... Angels appear in different forms, don't they? I mean, some yeah. of these, these cartoonish figures of these little figurines, what do they call them? Cherubs. Cherubs. Little tiny peep thingies. Little fat, that the, little fat angels little, that we put on a Christmas tree. Yeah, they need a diet. And, uh, yeah. But it is, I mean, but that's not, the, that's not an angel. No. no, no. I have descriptions of angels in the book. And they don't always come with wings. and all right. that. And they come in human form as well, don't they? That, I have three ways they appear. One is invisible. Well, it's not really appearing, but you sense their presence. And the second way is in what I call the traditional body. Wings, bright, glowing, kind of angelic, like we would think. And the third way is in human form. They just show up in human form. They look like humans and they act like humans, only they're a lot quieter. And they do what they're assigned to do and then they leave. I noticed in scripture throughout uh, various times angels showed up and people, to use the term, freak out. I mean, they, they fall on their faces, all kinds of things. But they also accompany their appearance with peace yes. be unto you. You know, yes. it's okay. Don't yes. throw up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's it's going to be all right. Is that, is that should be one of the fruits of what you you respond to from an angel if they do show up? Oh, yeah. They bring God's presence. They bring peace. They bring the kingdom of God into a place. So you should feel wonderful peace, but they're so otherworldly that it's, you know, like John on the island of Patmos. He felt like he was dead, you know, at the feet of Jesus. He fell down and tried to worship an angel in one of the chapters. And the angel says, don't do that. You know, only worship God. And there aren't there, there's also dark angels. I mean, they come from the Netherland yes. and from the pit or from wherever they come from. Yes. What about those angels? Well, those are the dangerous ones. They're led by Lucifer or Satan, we call him now. The Bible seems to indicate that a third of the angelic realm fell with Lucifer when he was cast out of heaven. And those are what 
our understanding theologically is those are the demons that we have to deal with in the church. How do people distinguish then if they, well, it seems obvious from what you're saying, yeah. if they're from God or from Lucifer, how, what, what do they do? How do they respond? It, in my personal opinion, when they do, when a holy angel comes, you can sense God's presence and God's peace. And there's this light and this wonderful presence. When a demon shows up, they, they carry the one that they follow the darkness, and it's a fear and all those other things. So when the lady in the story just now said, Lord, send your angels, yes. is, is that legitimate to ask for that? Well, the Bible said, Jesus himself said, uh, pray to the Father and ask him to send angels. And uh, so I, I get a little worried when people tell angels what to do because they don't listen anyway. You know, they don't pay attention to, they'll, they'll hear our prayers, of course. But the Father is the one who sends the angels to help us. Okay, and you wrote this book so we could understand this. Judith McNutt, Inspiring True Stories and Biblical Answers. Angels are for real. For real. And they are for real. So we, we, we have denied the supernatural and so many different sides of things. In the church as well. Yes. Just negated it, haven't we? We have. Well, my husband and I, of course, Francis, your yes. friend, we have a healing ministry. And it's taken, we've been together in the healing ministry, we figured out over a hundred years, trying to bring that message back to the church that God still heals today. And so angels are part of the kingdom of God. So we have to bring back all of the kingdom of God. Right. Angels are for real. And you and Francis don't look at all over a hundred. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. Thank you, Judith. Appreciate Thank you, it. Scott. Terry. Well, still ahead, one man in chronic pain finally finds relief. Find out how after this. It's just sad. It's sad that in a matter of minutes, people can trash you and your business on the internet and get away with it. Did you know nine out of 10 customers do an internet search before they buy? So when a former employee unfairly attacked you online, or an unhappy customer put you in a ripoff report, there was nothing you could do about it but watch your customers leave and your reputation suffer. Until now. Reputation.com gives you the power to protect yourself online. The internet can spin your life and job out of control, but Reputation.com watches over you online and improves your reputation by promoting the truth. Reputation.com protects everything you've worked so hard for, doing the things you just can't do yourself. Call now and get a free, detailed analysis of your online presence. Our reputation advisors will show you where the danger is and how much you have to risk. Call 1-800-791-4911 for your free reputation review. That's 800-791-4911. Call now. In 2008, my husband Gary departed for heaven. I was still grieving. And then to find out I had cancer, I began praying, God, how do I do this? Where do I do this? Cancer Treatment Centers of America was the place. Dr. Neelam outlined a plan that would take care of my mind and my body, and she prayed with me. For Bible-believing Christians, we're able to pray with them in a much deeper way as they begin to really rely upon their faith. At Cancer Treatment Centers of America, we believe in the power of faith and prayer as indispensable allies in the fight against complex and advanced stage cancer. I'm back in Telluride on the mountain skiing. I feel strong and healthy. Advanced medicine and technology. And I am a survivor. <laughs> the warm embrace of the spirit and the power of prayer. These are happy tears. Please go to cancercenter.com forward slash faith. Appointments available now. Cancer Treatment Centers of America, care that never quits. Being a bricklayer is a tough enough job as it is. For the man in our next story, that job became even tougher when he had to work through excruciating pain. Every morning at 4.30 a.m., Diodora leaves his home and takes a two-hour bus ride to his job. He works as a brick and cement mason at one of the largest cemeteries in Guatemala. But for more than a year, problems with his hands have made it very painful for Diodoro to handle the lime and other chemicals in the concrete. The pain came from the cracks in my skin, but it felt like the pain went all the way to my bones in my hands. And every day when my hands contact the lime and cement, my hands radiate with heat. Diodoro forces himself to work through the chronic pain because he loves his wife and three young stepdaughters. 
This is Carmen, one of the twins. We love him like he's a real dad. Diodora has no money to see a doctor, and food is actually a higher priority right now, so he gathers the girls together and asks them to pray. Soon after that prayer, Operation Blessing set up a mobile medical clinic to care for workers at the cemetery. There, a doctor diagnosed the condition and gave Diodora some cream to treat the cracks in his skin. But after a month, the condition was no better, so we provided Diodora with an antifungal cream. When that didn't work, we took him to see a dermatologist. Once his skin was open, it became infected with a fungus that went into his bloodstream. So Operation Blessing paid for a very expensive broad-spectrum antifungal drug, which Diodora could not afford. And within a few weeks, his hands were as good as new. Thanks to CBN and Operation Blessing for treating my hands. Now I am able to work without pain. I am happy because my new daddy's hands are all better. They were very rough before, but now they are soft and smooth. A bricklayer whose hands are soft and smooth, that's a miracle in itself, isn't it? You know, I think one of the things that we don't realize here in the United States is how difficult it is for people in other parts of the world to get help when they have a medical need. There's no disability insurance plan for them to fall back on. And beyond that, most of them have no money to go to a doctor. It's cash outlay from the get-go. And a lot of the people that we're able to serve as 700 club members are people who are just eking out a living and just getting by. No extra money for unexpected medical needs. And yet, when we all join together, when we all become 700 club members, we can reach right into the point of needs of little families like Diodoro's, and we can make a huge difference. You know, this is a man who wants to work hard, who wants to support his family. He just needed someone to be there to help him at this medical need. And so we thank you if you've joined the 700 club. This is just one of the situations that you're a part of, one of the solutions, one of the, the areas of hope that you're bringing into someone who didn't have any. And if you'd like to be a part of that and you haven't joined the 700 Club, it's a very simple process. All you have to do is go to your phone, call the toll-free number that's on your screen right now. It's 1-888-777-1999. Just say, I want to join the 700 Club. It's such a minimal commitment. 65 cents a day, $20 a month. And you'll be joining with thousands of us who are out to make a difference in the world with the love of Jesus Christ. And if you'd like to join Online, you can do that by logging on to CBN.com and uh, just go to click on the How Do I Become a Member button. Is that what it is? <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, t let me just add this. I think right now there's some folks with, with pain in their hands, mm -hmm. and you can feel heat going into your hands and the Lord healing you. He does those kinds of things. We're talking about the supernatural here today. So uh, if, if, if you're sensing that, give us a call, as Terry said, and uh, we'll pray for you on the telephone. That's what we're here to do, and God does miracles. Up next, he was crushed underneath a tractor trailer and lived to tell about it. They can't find anyone else in the world that's ever lived with five major arteries being severed. The angels were there to hold me together. How this man's life was saved by not one, but two angels when we come back. Headlines have announced his death. What they do is that they kind of group all religion together. Religion is just all one big thing that the skeptical world is now trying to attack. Evidence that God is alive and kicking on the next 700 Club Interactive. If you're the mother of a child with behavior problems, I'd like to talk to you. My name is Janet Lehman and I'm a behavioral therapist and a mom. I know what it's like when the child that you love becomes a defiant, out of control child who disrespects you. That's why my husband James and I created the Total Transformation, the program that tens of thousands of moms are now using to turn around their child's behavior. If you've heard about the Total Transformation and wondered if it will work for you, now you can try it for free. I'm willing to give away a thousand programs today for free. All you need to do is get the program and let us know how it works for you. We'll let you keep it for free. I know the total transformation works because I used these techniques with my own son and with troubled kids for over 30 years. Let me prove to you that it works by giving you the program free. Call the number on your screen now to get the total transformation free. CBN TV. 
on TBN.com. All the video you love in one easy to use location. Bruce Vanetta has the unique distinction of being the only person in the world who's ever lived with five major arteries being severed. Bruce is also the very first to admit that he wouldn't be here today without the help of two angels. Bruce Van Natta loved trucks, and his job as a self-employed diesel mechanic helped this Christian family man live out his power truck dreams and provide for his wife and four children. He never gave a second thought to the dangers of working on engines that weighed thousands of pounds until November 16, 2006. I was working on a Peterbilt logging truck about an hour from our home, and the guy that I was working with that day, the driver of the truck, asked me if I would look and try and diagnose one more problem, one more leak before I left. So if you can picture one of these great big Peterbilt trucks, here's the front bumper. And I slipped underneath that great big chrome bumper feet first. And he had had the front axle jacked up in the air and the passenger side wheel removed. The axle is going right across my chest at this point, maybe an inch or two above my chest. Then just as Bruce slipped under the truck, the 20 ton capacity jack holding up the truck shot out from its position and this 10,000, 12,000 pounds of weight that is on these two front wheels on this axle came down across my midsection, basically like a blunt guillotine, and just crushed me in half. Blood had splatted the inside of my throat, the back of my throat when it fell, and I could see that there was less than an inch of airspace between the bottom of the axle and the cement. So I knew that I was thinner than it, my body was thinner than an inch. The man jacked the truck up off of me. I begged him to get me out from underneath the truck. He didn't want to because he could tell that I had to have a broken back, and I did. Um, my vertebrae and my back were cracked uh, the width of the axle. It was the most incredible pain you can think of. I've never felt any kind of pain like that. The very next thing it is, I just called out, Lord, help me. I called out twice, Lord, help me. Instantly, all of the pain left Bruce's body. At that point, my, I went unconscious. My spirit left my body floated up into the ceiling, and now I'm, my spirit is looking down on the accident scene from above. The man I've been working with was on his knees above my body. He's talking, I can hear him talking, he's saying things like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But on each side of him, also on their knees, was a huge angel. Their heads stuck up at least this much taller than his head. So if you would have stood them up, they would have had to been like eight feet tall. They did not have wings, they were just very broad shoulders again. Between the two angels and him, it took up the whole front of this truck. There was a bright light shining around each one of them. They were matching bookends, they looked identical. They just had their arms underneath the truck, not holding the truck up, but had their arms angled in towards my body. There was no pain, in fact, just peace, and I can't even describe, words can't describe the peace that I felt in the ceiling. Bruce knew he had a serious choice to make. I was definitely on the point, on the verge of life and death. There were two voices, thoughts in my head. One was, shut your eyes, give up and die, and you're just gonna go to heaven anyway. It was very loud. There was another voice in my head, thought, much quieter, more of a whisper, and that one said, if you wanna live, you're gonna have to fight, and it's gonna be a hard fight. And next thing I knew, my spirit went back down into my body like that, just like a shot. Bruce was conscious as he was flown on a life flight to the hospital. Doctors there doubted he would even survive the next few hours. His ribs were broken, his pancreas and spleen crushed, and several major arteries had been severed. I had five major places, five places that major arteries were completely severed. I found out from uh, doctors that there was a medical study done in 2001. According to that study by the University of Southern California, they've used my case and compared it against that study. And according to that, they can't find anyone else in the world that's ever lived with five major arteries being severed. So I should have bled to death in just a few minutes. So my thought is the angels were there to hold my, somehow hold me together. Bruce stayed in the hospital for over two months and survived five major surgeries. Yet he had overwhelming obstacles to overcome. Almost 75% of his small intestines were crushed in the accident and had to be removed. Adult has 18 to 20 some feet of small intestine, they say, roughly. Somebody came in and told us, they didn't expect me to live much more than a year. I'm gonna to starve to death. I was losing weight very rapidly. They're feeding me intravenously. Bruce's once 180 pound frame dropped to 126 pounds. 
but Bruce's family was praying and his community rallied around him. Then Bruce received an unexpected visitor in his hospital room one day. The Lord woke up a man in New York two days in a row, someone that I met one time on vacation. And he came and prayed for me in the hospital, put his palm on my forehead, and when he prayed, uh, he prayed the way Jesus taught us to pray, and he spoke to the mountain, in this case, my intestine. And he said, small intestine, I command you to supernaturally grow back in length in the name of Jesus Christ. And when he did, it felt like 220 volts came out of his palm into my forehead, right into my body, and I could feel my intestines moving around and going up and down. After a long nine months of surgeries and hospital stays, Bruce was eventually able to feed himself, and he gained weight all the way up to 170 pounds. When he returned for testing, radiology reports and doctors confirmed that he had almost nine feet of small intestine. His intestines had doubled in length. When they test me, uh, they say that the intestines that the Lord gave me back were twice as good as normal. Even though I don't have my full amount, he gave me several feet back. Even though it's half as much, they absorb the vitamins, the minerals, the nutrients that I eat into my body normally. Over and over, the Lord kept confounding the doctors from the, from the point of them saying that I shouldn't have lived, I should have bled to death, to my intestines miraculously, intestines miraculously coming back. Over and over, uh, God was showing that miracles are happening. My pancreas rejuvenated by itself, my spleen rejuvenated by itself. Miracle after miracle after miracle, God just kept showing up and showing himself very real and strong that he is the miracle worker. Today, through their organization, Sweetbread Ministries, Bruce and his family travel together to talk about supernatural healing. Bruce has also written a book called Saved by Angels. Miracle after miracle after miracle. It's exciting to just see what God is doing in people's lives today and that he is alive and well and he wants to reach people at their point of need. And so we've got a God that loves us more than we can ever imagine. And he pours out his love on us in such an amazing way that it's indescribable. He will give his angels charge over you, lest you dash your foot on a rock. God sees every, every aspect of your life, everything that you do, every hurt that you experience. He knows every hair on your head, and he cares. It matters to him. All of the things that we're talking about on the program today, the angels, the miracles, the supernatural, are all there for one reason and one reason only, for you to know your Father for you to know the Abba Father who loves you, who cares for you, who has purpose and plans for you. He says he knew you before you were even formed in your mother's womb. Surely then he also knows the steps you take in your life today. I know there are many of you watching and you say, I have a need, I have something I'm crying out to God for in my own heart. You know, the Bible says where two or more are gathered together in his name, he's there in the midst of them and whatever we ask in the name of Christ will be done. If you'd like to pray with someone about a specific need in your own life today, the number on your screen, 1-888-777-1999, is a prayer line. You can call and pray with a fellow believer who has given their lives to Christ and who would love to be there for you today to pray with you as you seek the throne of God. So call now. We do have some of you who have uh, submitted questions. Marguerite's in our chat room. Marguerite, what do you have? This is from Adam. He asks, do angels have thoughts and dreams of their own or do they merely do God's binding? Hmm. What do you think, Scott? Well, from what I understand in reading scriptures, I think they're giving a certain amount of autonomy Mm -hmm. and they, have, they do make decisions on the spot for a given situation. That's what I understand. A lot of warfare that goes on in the heavenlies. It, that it, there really are is. In. And when you read through the scriptures, mm -hmm. how many times that angels show up. I, we, we just discount so much of this. Yes. And, you know, as you were talking mm -hmm. about, this, this man's story is absolutely amazing. Yeah, five Explain million. it. You know. Why didn't he bleed out? Yeah, why isn't that in front of the New York Times? <laughs> yeah. I, you know, what, what's the deal? And we just yeah. don't know how to explain it. But there it is, and I choose to believe in Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and those angel guys. Yeah. <laughs> the big guys, right, yeah, that he sends right. out to help. Well, God's got our backs, certainly, and he does it in different ways. Angels are one of the ways that he expresses his great love of us and his care and nurture for us as his children. So uh, we want to bring that to you today as you walk through life to know that God has you. God's got your back. We want to leave you with Psalm 91 today. 
I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Thanks for being with us. We hope today's encouraged you. Bless you.